grand rising and priming powerful beings shout out to you it's the holistic motivator and today i'm going to be talking to you about the difference between loneliness and isolation today i'm going to be talking to you about the difference between loneliness and isolation we're in the season of expansion not loneliness or isolation and we are healing and growing and we're transforming how we used to be to how we want to be by deciding that I am not going to suffer my past. I am not going to be in loneliness. I, I, I'm not going to be in loneliness because I am not lonely. I'm all one. We're going to dismantle the idea that I'm lonely when I'm by myself by recognizing by yourself means your isolation. And loneliness means you're not in tune with everything around you isolation simply means you're in with yourself so that way you can tap into what you really have so you can reveal what you got and you can know who put it there so keep tapping into this episode of ed talks daily as i talk about the difference between loneliness and isolation let's get it between isolation and loneliness i'm gonna be talking about this this is a podcast ed talks daily is all about growth and all aspects of your life how do you solidify a holistic paradigm of life so that way you can have a healthy body healthy mind into spirit if you want to get and join me on this journey of becoming the best version of ourselves keep tapping in to ed talks daily if this episode empowers you make sure you subscribe like and share this video or this podcast send a message to a friend let them know tap in the ed talks daily because it's powerful baby <laughs> let's get to it the difference between isolation and loneliness now have you ever been in a season where you just felt like nobody cares like you felt like you're all by yourself but i want to remind you that even when you're by yourself god always is with you even when you're not with other people and you're not in a circumstance or situation where you're around other people, you are always with God. If I'm always with God and God is always with me and God is in me, how can I be lonely? If, I, if you're always with God and God is with you, how can I be lonely? You're all one, baby. Let's comment in the chat. And if you're listening, say this to yourself, say this to your kids. I'm not alone, I'm all one. I'm not alone, I'm all one. I'm in one with the divine, I'm in one with the Holy Spirit, I'm in one with God. So I may be isolated, but I'm not insulated. I may be separated, but I'm never disconnected, right? So sometimes we think separation is disconnection. Sometimes separation is introspection. That's what is isolation. Now, loneliness is sometimes when we feel like we don't have the support system. We don't feel like we're around who we should be around. or We don't feel like we have the friendships, the love, the relationships that's going to pro- that's going to allow us to experience the life that we that we feel. I- I'm never alone. I'm I'm in one. All right. We're going to keep saying that throughout the entire episode. Once again, this is a podcast. So I'm going to be flowing as I express to you these these words. Before I started this, I said, God, I don't know what I'm going to say. But I know that in this season, people need the words that you have for them. So please bless me with the words to say. So I'm going to flow. Isolation is not insulation. Isolation is revelation. In the moment of your isolation, you can get so many revelations. Isolation does not necessarily mean you're not sharing. Isolation means God is doing more sharing with you than, you, than, than the world is, than the media is, than the movies are, than, than the sounds are, than the noises are. It's, 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 it's in the midst of silence you hear the voice of God. A lot of times we, we, we think that we need to hear God as it relates to, man, a voice. But it's that still small voice inside of you where you have not actually disconnected, but when you have actually detached yourself from all of the noise, that's where you get the introspections and the revelation that reveals what God put inside of you and what you have to de- de- develop and bring out to the world. 
So isolation is not insulation. Now, we're, we're, I'm going to express to you what is the definition of loneliness. Did you know that loneliness is one of the major Americans are suffering from loneliness? And in fact, mental health is affected by loneliness. Did you know that one of the major things that you can do in your life is to find your tribe, is to find people you vibe with that are the same wavelength as you, and sometimes not the same wavelength. Because sometimes we're in a different wavelength that we need to we need to get around people who are at a higher wavelength, right? That means that does not mean that oh you're not in the right wave. It just means that certain situations, circumstances, past things, maybe just around your, your life, maybe you're going through anxiety and stress and depression, and you need to be fueled by people in your circle that's going to not check you in a moment of like making you feel bad about you but literally check the real you check on the real you, check on you right and and what those people is going to do for you is they're going to literally be be a, a a mirror to reflect back to you and also show you not just reflect back to you how you are but reflect back to you how you really are because sometimes we forget we forget our power we forget who we are and guess what happens we start to give into automatic limiting thoughts we start to give into automatic limiting thoughts self-destructive behaviors negative self-talk that brings you down and a lot of times we need people around our corner to empower us to remind us who we really are right so that's why we find our tribe that's why we find people we vibe with that's why we we actually listen and plug into sermons to motivational speeches that's why we watch videos of empowerment that's why we go into the word which is the first one that's why we connect to god so a lot of times we may not even have the people around you to do that but that's why we have something called the internet right it's interconnected we're all connected we're all one even when we're separate we're together right even when we're separate we're, we're together you ever walked into the room and you can feel the energies of everyone around you you can feel the emotions right or you get in a room you get anxious because there's a lot of anxiety or you get a room where there is just positivity now all of a sudden you, that positivity is rubbing off of you so negativity is not the only thing that rubs off of you positivity rubs off of you right and enlightenment and empowerment rubs off so in the moment of loneliness sometimes we need to plug in Firstly, the source. Secondly, resources in our tribes and communities. And sometimes it's not that we are lonely, but it's that we have a feeling of inadequacy or we feel like we're not in a wavelength where we should be around people when that's the moment that we need people. We all need somebody. We all need somebody. Everybody needs somebody. And guess what? You got one body and that's the body of Christ. And even when you feel like you don't have somebody, you got somebody. And you got to know that I am somebody. I'm not just somebody. I am somebody. I, I was uh, I was bestowed with some sort of like light inside of me that, that says that, yo, I may not be at this wavelength right now, but it's just that my 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 true energy is being blocked right now and I'm actively seeking for new ways of empowerment. So a lot of times in our season of isolation, God will separate you from certain limiting emotional states, certain limiting emotional energy from certain narcissistic people, from certain people that's not good for your mental health. And you think that God is turning, is making you lonely, but God is saying that, yo, you need to be alone so you can be all one with the one because you're the one. Right. I got something inside of you and you're around so much negative energy that I have to take you away from it, isolate you so that way you can find out who you really are. Right. So there's a difference between isolation and loneliness. Right. Isolation does not lead to depression. If you listen to the revelations, isolation will not lead into depression. If you realize that this is your time to step outside and get in touch with nature. God is not just in the word in the beginning there was the word and the word was god and the word was with god the word is in the plants and what do i mean by the word is in the plants wisdom is in the plants god is in the, the essence of god fuels everything you breathe in you breathe in oxygen nitrogen and inner gas breathing god in you breathe out breathing god out and you breathe out co2 and you feed the plants when you go outside, you have something called the post-electromagnetic field, the PMF 
from the earth with your bare foot. The, the, the point underneath your, 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 your foot called bubbling springs, literally walking barefoot, you are charged up by the earth. That means that on your moment of all alone, all one, alone, literally think of yourself as you being in the garden. So that, that way God can cultivate, to, so that way God can bring these revelations into your spirit. So like Selah says, God knows what he's doing when he removes people from your life, right? God knows what he's doing. There's a reason why God will, will actually do that. Somebody said Moses isolated himself. That's right. Jesus isolated himself. That's right. Elijah isolated himself. There was a moment in Elijah's life where, where, where there was a woman coming from him. Somebody comment. Was it Delilah? Right. The, the woman coming for him, trying, trying to get rid of him. And God is like, Elijah, what are you doing here? What, what are you doing here? Don't forget the mission. Sometimes we isolate ourselves because of fear. God was not the one isolating you. Or, or sometimes we are running away from something we need to be running towards. And we, we are saying God is isolating you, but you're running away from. So know the difference between running away from and isolation too. N know the difference between separation and isolation. Know the difference between separation from energies that no longer serve you and loneliness. Right? Some seasons in your life, you have what you call energy vampires. We have energy drainers. We have, you have people that actually come into your life not to add into your life, but to, to actually take away from your life. Right? To take stuff from you. To use your body. And then when you're by yourself, you, you can't stand yourself because you think you need somebody to validate what God validated already. You, you, you think what somebody said they're going to do to you is more important than what God said he has in store for you. And God said, I got more in store for you. But trust me, right? though I walk through the shadows of the valleys of death, I shall fear no evil. Right? Don't worry about that woman, that vile woman. Don't, don't, don't worry about that woman. Don't worry about that man, that vile man. Right? Right? They can't do nothing to you. Right? Don't worry about that narcissistic person. What, what can they do? Who can stand against me when God is with me? Right? Nothing can stand against you when God is with you. And you got to speak power into your life. You got to speak life into your life. Stop speaking death into your life. Well, nobody wants me. Well, that's not the case. The people who you think don't want you didn't want the real you. That's why they're not in your life anymore. They never, want, they, they never saw you. They saw your body, they saw your money, they saw what you could do for them, but they didn't see you as a being. So they were not in your life to add value to your life. Now they're not in your life and you think that you're missing something where God said, no, you're not missing anything. You were born with everything. You're not missing. Why are you missing them? God is saying, no, you're missing yourself. You're missing who you really are. And so sometimes God will isolate you to reveal what he put inside of you. But what you have to do with the revelation is you have to get yourself in a state of empowerment. That's why I tell people when you're isolated, make sure that you're working on yourself. The holistic lifestyle is best implemented when you're when you're actually taking time to work on you. Right. There was a season of my life where I didn't spend a lot of time going to parties, going out, going going around people, because let me tell you something. I didn't necessarily need other people to validate what God put inside of me. I didn't necessarily need women to make me feel good because I felt good all by myself. <laughs> hey, I felt good all by myself. And what I mean by I felt good all by myself, I'm not talking about carnal. I'm talking about in my spirit place, I felt like I was all one in one and I'm good by myself. Somebody says I can do by myself. Now, let's not let's not separate that from saying I don't need people. I can do by myself. It's not, oh, I don't need nobody. I don't, you, let me tell you something. You can't do nothing in this world without other people. You can't even start a business without other people. If, if, who are you going to give? Who are you going to serve? You're like, man, I want to do great things in the world. I want to bring my gift out. I want to do something good. And you're like, man, but, but yo, 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 I don't have. If you have no people to empower, if you have no people to bless you with your product, if your soap can't, can't wash nobody's skin, who that soap going to be? Businesses don't work without people. You are a business, so you need people, right? But guess what? The need for people is not for validation. 
it's a dance. Life is a dance, and we got to get out there and start doing the, the samba, baby. Shout out to Rockstar. You got to get out there and do the cha-cha, baby. You got to dance. Life is a dance, right? But you got to learn how to dance by yourself in the dark, too. So it's a duality. Life is a duality, dual nature of life. I am satisfied by myself, but I bring my satisfaction within others, and now we're all satisfied in a, in a, in a beautiful environment. I'm satisfied all by myself, now I'm sat, but, but now that I'm a satisfied person, I can be satisfying to other people, right? I'm, I'm peaceful by myself, so I don't go around people to, for people to bring peace onto me. We combine our peace and create a peaceful environment. I'm happy by myself, so I bring my happiness around other people, and that happiness creates a beautiful dance, right? I'm confident in myself. I confide in me, so I, I attract confident people, so we, we are confiding in each other, right? But in what name do you surround yourself with? In what name do you get around people for? There, there's something in the word that says, when, when many assemble together in my name, great things can happen. What, what that means is not necessarily when everybody goes to church and we praise. Now, that's a big part. It's, it's usually when everybody is in, a, is in that div their divine higher nature, we can build something great. So church does not always look like church. Church is your temple being in a solid, good place that you can take your temple with other temples. And now, now, now you have a church. Can I get an amen for that? <laughs> what do I mean by that? You solidified your temple. So now you're not ego-based. Last week I talked about relinquishing your ego, voluntarily giving it up. Part of relinquishing your ego is understanding that we're not separate, you're not separated from, we're not separate from other people that, as much as we think. We think we're separated from other people, right? But even there's something called collective consciousness. And sometimes you're not suffering your consciousness, you're suffering the consciousness of the collective. Why? Because you have not learned to, to, to be in your temple where you make yourself pure. In between this, you're thinking about everybody else's instead of making yourself in alignment with God, and then you're able to show up your highest version. So we want to show up in our higher selves. How do we do that? I'm going back to the holistic lifestyle, baby. It's in what you feed yourself. Now, somebody says, man, they're always going back talking about food. Oh, you thought I was just talking about physical food? That's going to be a one major entry point because one of the major things that we could control easier, well, not necessarily easily, or, or one of the things that we can actually change faster is we make decisions to eat better. But some of the foods that we eat is food for the spirit. Some, a word says, well, you could get bread for the body. That's good. But bread for the spirit, that's even better. So food is also what gets in your spirit. Some people, they wake up, you know what food they feed themselves with? And somebody's going to be like, bacon? And no, no, no. Okay, they, they do do that. And somebody says, man, you talking about me? Okay, 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 I'm not coming for you. This is no judgment zone. What I'm saying is they feed themselves with news. The food of the spirit that they're getting is, oh, somebody got killed today. Oh, this happened today. Oh, why you shut off the news? Stop, shut off the bad news, right? Because bad news sells. But, but, but you're selling your soul away to the bad news, right? Because they're using you as human capital to spark the views up so they can make money off of your pain. I just posted a video about trauma marketing. I just made a video about trauma bonding. I made a video about ancestral pain being sparked by the content that you watch. How come that for other cultures, they have Christmas movies but for people of our nature, they have slave movement, movies. Well, how come, how come the, the, around the pagan holiday, the, the, the paganism is, is infiltrated by, by colonialism, right? How come they show you pictures of colored or, or cultured, in fact, or melanated, better word, people in chains and other people in stages of enslaving. Why? Because they want to enslave your mind. Now, I'm not on a race tip. We're all one. Let go of your ego. So I'm not saying this is you. But I'm saying no matter what your color or creed is, 
the, it's, this is not a color thing. Th this is a righteousness or wickedness tip. Tip, because another somebody says, "Well, I, I'm 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 not I'm not melanated. I have no melanin in my skin, but I love people. I I appreciate you, Ed. I hear you. My spirit connects to yours. You see, you're operating in a spirit place. So for those of you who's like, man, this doesn't apply to me. I'm not saying that you're you're a color colonist. No, you're a humanist. So you can relate to this. But but I'm saying in, in our ancestries, right there, look, not everybody that looks like you is operating like you. Right? Not not everybody that that that, that is of the same heritage is, is 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 of is from the same kingdom. Right? There are certain people who are in the kingdom of God and no matter what they look like, they, they don't do that. So the, what the media does is what the media is Somebody says we all have melanin. Exactly, we, we do. But what I'm saying is there, some of us have more melanin and it comes out of our skin. So what I'm saying is in the media of its own, what happens is there is trauma. And those media feeds our spirit. So it, it brings down our spirit. It, it diminishes our vibration, frequency, and energy. And we have to, we have to isolate ourselves from the food that is draining your soul from freedom from pain. Freedom from pain is when you say, I'm not going to take in these negative news. I'm not going to watch these, these movies that, that, that block out these things. I, I'm going to dwell in, in the word of God in this season. I'm going to be focused around empowerment. You, you know why I've been posting like five, six, eight, ten videos a day? Because God told me, you be there for the people. And I was like, God, what people? Let me tell you something. God, like, be there for the people. I'm like, what people? There's nobody watching. And he's like, okay, I'm about to show you. And then all of a sudden, I started to blow up. Hundreds of followers. I'm like, oh, okay. God was like, okay, because you are obedient, because you listened to what I told you, I'm going to bring the people. And you may not see all the people you're touching, Ed, but keep doing what you're doing. All the healers, seekers, teachers, motivators in the building. You, you may not be seeing the people you're touching, but you're touching them if you operate in your gifting. So you need to put stuff inside of you that you can empower your soul to operate in your gifting. So in your isolation, God is, is refining your character. God is refining your gift and allowing you to share that. And, and God will work in your heart. God will work in your heart to see souls and not, and, and, and not characteristics. God will allow you to, to, to see the light and, and, and not whether somebody is light or dark. God, God will allow you to see the light of somebody's spirit and not the complexion of their skin. And that, that's why I wasn't, I wasn't brought here to empower people that look like me, people that came from the same place as me, right? I, I, I will speak to those people intricately because I'll speak to my people because my people is not a person of color. My people is a person of a light, enlightened beings. Those are my people. You hear what I'm saying? So this is what relinquishing my ego has allowed me to say. I'm not just here for IECA. I'm not just here for I'm not just here for melanated people. I'm not just here. I'm here for the people of Christ. I'm here to, for the people of light. I, I empower with Christ consciousness. And I'm okay with that. No matter what anybody has to say. No matter what anybody feels. If you don't believe me. if you have, But if you have ears, you're going to hear what, what the Spirit of the Lord has to say. If you have ears, you're going to hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say. I don't take credit for what I do. I just, I'm grateful that God is able to use me as a vessel. So I am a conduit that God can throw through, flow through. In my season of isolation, God has been able to reveal that. And seeing myself, I see other people. So an idea of oneness, right? Not separation, but togetherness. N not, oh, these are the original people. These are, no. We can't operate in that state anymore. Because that becomes another ego trip. That becomes another form of separation. What do I mean by that, right? If we just focus on the people that looks like us, then we're not really seeing people. We're seeing color. We're doing the same thing that the colonial mentality did to us. 
And we can't do the same thing colonial mentality did to us because then now you're becoming your oppressor. Now you're becoming your oppressor. Let that sink in. Don't become your oppressor. Don't, 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 don't tap into the deeds of, of, the, of the evil ones. Don't operate in, in the ways of Babylon, right? But by all means, empower the people you were called to empower, right? Because they will be here. Don't operate in, in, in that mindset. So what do I mean by that? We, we did not come to fight against people. We came to fight against systems, to bring the kingdom of God here. The kingdom of God is within men. The kingdom of God is within you as a woman. So guess what you have to do? You have to make yourself in a way to reveal the kingdom of God. Okay? So the person who's crying, hope it is tears of joy. If you're laughing, hope it's laughter of realization that why should we stay in, 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 in crying when, when all of us, our souls are crying out for connection? Why should we stay in loneliness when, when our souls are, 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 are inquiring for us to be all one? We, we are not going to be able to win the battle if we're, if we're fighting each other. We're not going to be able to win the battle if we're fighting against each other. We got to we got to come. We got to come together. Right. We, we, we got to see behind beyond how somebody looks like. So. The difference between loneliness and isolation is understanding we're all one. The food that we intake is not just the food that we ingest in our belly. But it's the food that we ingest as it relates through our eyes, through our senses, what we see, what we constantly let our ears hear, what we constantly taste, what we constantly feel. And our feeling is not just the things that we touch, but it's the things that we, we touch upon. It, it's, it's how we feel. Our, our touch is not just the things that we touch. Our touch is the, is the energy. With a touch, Jesus healed. How was he able to do that? He, he was an enlightened being. He operated in, in, in the frequency of love, an unconditional love at that, right? That's the most healing thing. So God extended his grace and mercy and favor towards all. That's why Jesus died on the cross, right? That's what that symbolism is, dying to your old self to be born in the spirit. That's why Jesus knows these things will come to pass, but he also knows it wasn't the end, but it was a new beginning for humanity. That's why no, no matter what people say about Jesus, they always have to recognize, they, they so recognize the, the, the presence of Jesus that even in time, because God transcends through time, that they have to put Christ's name in time. BC means before Christ, right? That means that before there was the Gregorian calendar, which you think that the year is about to come to an end, so you you in a wor you in a worry, you're in a hurry, you're trying to get your goals together, you're trying to change your life, but this is a season of introspection, reflection. We're actually entering the winter solstice in two days, and you think that the year is ending. The new year is in the spring equinox. We're not in a new year. We're not going towards the end of the year. So isn't that, isn't that pressure off your back to think that, man, I got to go get everything done by the end of the year? We're not at the end of the year. We're literally, we're, we're not at the end of the year just yet. We literally just got into the final, we're literally just getting into the final cycle of the year called winter. And winter is a season of hibernation, which may feel like a season of isolation, but it definitely shouldn't be a season of loneliness. Why? A lot of us think we have to celebrate Christmas because it's, it's, it's the celebration of Christ's life. Did you know that Christmas is not a celebration of Christ's life? Did you know that Christ was not even born in December 25th? That December 25th is actually a pagan holiday where there was actually a season of lawlessness, where, where men was having sex with other men, where there was orgies and stuff going on, where, where they were exchanging gifts, like, and, and it was a way of sacrificing and doing certain things. Did you know that, that the mistletoe was not actually this kissing underneath the mistletoe? The kissing underneath the mistletoe was lawlessness, was unrighteousness, was, was covetousness. Did you know that everything that we feel like we have to partake in, 
Did you, it's, it's, literally, it's literally saying that, you know what? Because Christianity has became such a primary, primary thing, and because of the stuff that was set up back then, we can't keep our pagan holiday, so let's Christianize the pagan holiday and make it like it seems it's about Christ so people can now follow it. So now why you, you go, you go and you're like, man, I feel bad about my life because I don't have a Christmas tree and there's no gifts underneath the Christmas tree. Listen, don't feel bad about that. Oh, man, I can't get gifts for some, this person. Did you know that your presence is the most gift that you need to give in this season? Why? Because there's an expectation for presence. But here's the thing I said, whether you celebrate Christmas or you don't, they have created a culture where we feel the need to connect around this time so you don't have to celebrate Christmas to celebrate people. So there was a season where I was like, I don't celebrate Christmas. Right, I don't celebrate Christmas, but I celebrate people. So if somebody is having a party, is having a get together, I'm gonna show up. I'm gonna show up for them. Right, I'm going to go go to that event. Be there for your family. Be there for your loved ones. Because here's the thing. Even though Christmas is is paganish, it's a pagan holiday, there is a desire to connect around this time, right? Because in the winter time we're hibernating one, but it's cold another. We need hugs. We need the heat of each other's spirits, not just a physical hug. We need hugs. We need love. We need joy. We need peace. So we have to be around family around this time, right? Call people more often now. This week, make it so... Pro just, just start calling people. Just start checking on people, right? So don't focus on giving present as you're focused on giving presents. Let me tell you something. If you could go and buy a card, it doesn't have to be a Christmas card, right? A card is not a, it's not, it's not a Christmas card. It's a, it's, a, it's a letter of appreciation. Right, if you go go buy you a card, in fact, don't even buy a Christmas card. Buy a, a card, buy, get a letter, and write something powerful. That's the best gift you can give. Just, just, just tell somebody how you appreciate it. In fact, you go family dollar, get one for 50 cents a dollar. It does not matter if the card was $3, $4, or $5. It's not the content. It's not how much you spend on the card. It's how much you put invest in the card. It's how much spirit you put in it. It's how much love you put in it. Right. So you don't have to go buy everybody gifts. You don't have to go. You have just be a gift to everybody. Somebody said, ah, oh, man, you messing up Christmas for me. I was waiting for all the tech. It, just give somebody a gift on their birthday. <laughs> right. Guess what? That's what Jesus promoted. That's what the Bible promoted. Guess what the wise men did? Frankincense, myrrh. They brought gifts to, to Christ when he was born. Right. Because. Christ was into the world. So give somebody a gift on their birthday, right? Because we're celebrating life here. We're, ce we're celebrating somebody entering into life. Hey, I, let's, gi let's give you a gift. So birthdays are great gift gifting time, right? But we should be a gift at all times. So let's say, instead of what we do to say, I need to feel bad that I can't give my kids gifts, how about you start to educate them on how they are a gift? How about you start to affirm them? One of the major things that affected me and still affects me to this day is that I never really received affirmation from my parents. I never really received like affirmations unless I did what they wanted me to do. Like I lick all liglis. Like I lick all liglis. Somebody says, what you speaking? Creole. Like I lick Liglis. Unless I, I, I stayed home and did right by them or however they thought I should do. Unless I got good grades in school or unless I went to church, I wasn't necessarily worthy of the praise. But I discovered that it's not like I lick Liglis that makes you, that makes you, um, it's just you being a being. So celebrate your kids, celebrate your, obey, um, celebrate your parents, celebrate your parents. Now I just told you, I wasn't necessarily affirmed by my parents, but I love my parents, right? I, my stepmom, I love my stepmom, right? I told my stepmom the other day, I recognize your resentment towards me, but yet you still took care of me. I, re I recognize that. I'm like, Yo, I, okay, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to give you the resentment you give me. It's not that it doesn't hurt me, but I choose to not give you the same resentment and energy you give me. 
I'm going to appreciate you anyways because I acknowledge that you didn't birth me into this world. In fact, you probably don't even like my mom. So therefore, you don't like me. So when you see me, you see my mom. So you probably take care of me out of duty because you serve the Lord like I serve the Lord. But you resent me. But I'm going to love you. So appreciate the people that you don't feel appreciation from. Love your parents no matter what you thought they did to you because they did a whole lot for you. First of all, somebody, nope, my brother ain't did nothing for Even some of your parents that's not even in your life. Now, this is going to be deep for somebody because that goes deep. And it's not that simple, I know. Nothing is simple. You think this is simple? You think choosing to be loving and like Christ is simple? Oh, oh they, just killed, they just put me on the cross. I'm the Messiah. Mock, mock me with a crown of thorns. Rock, mock me with a crown of thorns. Spit on my face. Burn my ribs. Let, let somebody who murdered and, and stole off, off the cross but kept me on the cross and then killed me when I came to save you and give you truth. And then you know what he said? Forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Follow that example. Say that, think of the same way as anybody who hurt you. Forgive them for they didn't know that they were operating out of, out of their trauma. Now that's hard to do. Because in our hearts, we may have heart in our hearts, but Jesus, God will do something to soften your heart once you start to get your heart in the right place. And forgiveness does not necessarily mean get back in a narcissistic relationship. Forgiveness does not necessarily mean go into something that you shouldn't be getting into. Forgiveness sometimes means acknowledge the suffering in somebody else's house, accept that they were suffering and they inflicted the suffering, right? And forgive them for they did not know what they're doing, but be around your tribe, those who are your disciples, because they will come for you even in the tomb. They will, look, they, they will come for you even when the tomb. They will come for you even when you, in your tomb. Those are the people who care for you. So forgiveness does not mean get back in a toxic environment. Somebody says, I forgive my ex. So now all of a sudden you're calling your ex. Oh. Let the former things be the former things be, and get into the latter things because the latter shall be greater than the former. So forgiveness does not always mean get back in a toxic relationship. Right? So how about that parent? How about that friend you haven't talked to in a while that you know that you love and that loves you? How about that, that, maybe call him, maybe that might be a, you know why this could be a great season of healing? Because this is also a great season of suffering. To develop the strength in the middle of suffering, to say I choose healing, is going to do a ripple effect that's going to soften other people's hearts. He said, man, how did this person develop the courage to do this? Even though I didn't even make an effort, they made that effort? How? So make an effort to love people that doesn't necessarily replicate the love of you, the love for you. And that's really hard, but that's called love without conditions. Love without conditions says, I don't necessarily love you because of what you do for me. Under these circumstances and conditions, I will give you love. Love is, I may have to love you from a distance, but I'm still going to love you because God never distanced himself from me, no matter what I did. Man, glory to God. God never distanced himself from me. Look, he saw the best in me when everyone else around me could only see the worst in me. I love that song. Y'all want to listen to that music. He saw the best in me when everyone around me could only see the worst in me. That's a beautiful hymn. Sing hymns and praises unto the Lord around this time. Why? Because God always sees you. Right? God always sees you. You're like, man, God, I know you put all this greatness on. You got anointing in my life. You put favor in my life. You got grace for me. And you're like, yo, but why do I keep doing this against the God in me? And God's like, I, I forgive you. He going to keep forgiving me seven times, seven, seven times, 77 times. Just like God forgive you seven times, 77 times, you need to forgive others seven, seven, seven times. Because you need to forgive others just like God forgave you. But forgiveness does not mean get back in a toxic situation. Because sometimes you have to forgive and isolate. 
God, Jesus forgave and he, le and he left, but he never left. He actually forgave and he went into everyone. He, he died and he lived inside of all of us. So he never really died. He just died to his human body and he, uh, he, he manifested into the spiritual body of God. So that spiritual body is us. We are the body of Christ. So as we were, so as you think that you are being stripped or as you think you're being thoughts of calling him Yeshua. I had to stop there because that's all I've been hearing. Yeshua, Yeshua, Yeshua. I've been hearing, not when we speak of God, that can be very a latent term, right? It could just be God. When somebody knows what God you're talking about, then you have to specify like the God of Abraham. That's why Yahweh, Yeshua, right? It's, it's actually better. It's actually the Hebrew, right? So yes, call on Yeshua. That's actually the greatest way to reference to Jesus, right? But I say Jesus because a lot of people know it. But thank you for that mental readjustment there because I've been hearing that a lot. So yes, Yeshua trans transmuted even Jehovah. All these are other words, right? The reason why Christ came and he died for our sins and our, is because he wanted us to recognize who we really are. He really wanted us to see what we were made of. He wanted us to see that, yo, people will stone you. But you have to still have faith and speak your truth. So a lot of you watching are only watching because we resonate. We're, we're either on the same wavelength or our hearts is connecting with truth. Right? Because I don't speak on just what I know. I speak on what I don't know that I know. That's why I know it's true. What I don't know that I know is actually connecting to the ether for latent terms. But I would say connecting to the Holy Spirit for the it's really, I, this is what I know for sure without knowing how I know it, but I know it. That's truth, right? It's not I read it or I heard it. It's I hear it and I spread it. Somebody says, you are good with words. God is good with these words, baby. <laughs> Can I get an amen for that one? So blessings to Yeshua, Jehovah, Yahweh, right? The first and the last, the beginning and the end, the one who transcends through time the healer of all nations, right? Shout out to Christ. The name of Jesus will break chains that, 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 that your ancestors cannot. Now, somebody said, would, somebody asked me a question the other day. They sent me a DM, and by the way, be sure to message me if you have any questions, text me if you have any questions. They asked me, should I create an altar for my ancestors? Here's what I told them. I said, I honor my ancestors. But they went upon this life, they suffered through their pain, they did what they did, and they blessed me with my own DNA where they left me instruction, knowledge, wisdom, insight, experiences, in my DNA to continue the work. Now they're resting in peace, but now I'm going to them, I, I, I'm disturbing their peace, asking them for solutions for the lessons that they left in my DNA. So I said, why would I create an altar to bother my ancestors when, when the major ancestor, which is Christ, said, pray in my name. So I said, I don't need to create an altar for my ancestors. I, I'll, I'll get my knees on the altar of Christ, the ancestor. And that's who I would praise and ask questions to because he was the same one that guided my ancestors. So while my ancestors is with Christ, why would I go bother them? Why would I go bother them? Let them rest in peace. So I was like, I don't need an altar for my ancestors. I I'm going to get on the altar and praise God. I'm going to ask Jesus, right? Because all that was, all that is, is, is. So somebody says, you got great power. My great power does not just come from light. It's, it's the duality of both light and darkness. Not all my ancestors and my father and my mother actually revealed to me that my ancestors was actually great spiritual people. In fact, some of them were spiritually, but they also prayed to other ancestors and spirits. They didn't all follow Christ. So I discovered that I'm actually not just, somebody said I'm the black sheep of the family, but I'm the goat. I'm the goat because I'm able to utilize all the things that my ancestors left for me 
but they didn't give praise to Christ and I'm able to utilize that in the name of Jesus. So yeah, they may have used herbs for something else. They may have gave homage, but, but guess what? I use herbs for healing of the nations. Praise to, praise to God. So I don't know how many of y'all can relate. I don't know how, how y'all like all your ancestors were saint and Christians. All your ancestors were all about Christ conscious. I don't know about y'all. You, you, I don't know about you, but I'm of Haitian, I'm of Aetian descent, and not all my ancestors praise God like I praise God now. So therefore, I don't need to go bother them because I don't, I don't need them. I, I don't need them to do what God can do for me. Because I don't praise them, I praise God because I never know who they praised. I want that to really hit you. You're praising to some people you don't know who they praised. But you, if you're a belief, if you're a true follower of Christ, why would you praise people you don't know who they believe? So I told him respectfully. And he, and he took that and he said, thank you for your... I didn't ignore him and say, well, that's... I'm not the type of person that casts stone upon people that seek to know. Oh, well, that's demonic. Well, that's... Uh, there's a lot of Christians out there like that, that cast a stone upon everybody and what they do. I'm, I just, I want to take you from a logical perspective just to really think about it. Let's really, let's really think about it, sweetheart. Really, really think about it. Why worship creation when you can worship the creator? I'm going to say, I wear these stones here. I've never said stone changed my life. This is pyrite, right? I understand that things are magnetic. Things are matter. And if this has a magnetic and matter frequency that can, I'm all around this technology that can block out certain radiation, I'm going to wear it. But I've never said stone changed my life. I've never like, I'll have stones around me, right? I'll meditate, I have stones on me, but I've never worshipped stones. I would never tell somebody a stone is demonic. Who created the stone? God created this stone, right? So somebody says, man, you burning incense? I'm never saying, but I'm not burning incense because I'm praising demons. I'm burning incense to get rid of demons while I praise God. That's God said, man, stay steadfast, pray, and burn incense. Why? Why do we make every other tool uh, that's a spiritual tool demonic because we don't know how to use it and give praise? Right. So what we're doing is we're actually taking man's rules and we're not observing the nature. Of, of God. So the reason why I'm I'm the type of person that is I'm pretty much here for the Gentiles. Like I was reading um, Ephesians, and and that's the word that God put in my heart to read this rising. And I was like, oh, okay, I see, I see, I see. Like, which means that I'm at a place where it's like church people don't always accept me, and other people don't always accept me. But there's there's these people who do accept me because they can resonate with a truth about it that they they can't really understand but they can feel it and really understand it right so there's i do all of these things and, and these herbs and the other day um i remember my dad was like man what are you doing all this stuff are you a mumble so i'm like no, i'm not no mumble what are you talking about and some of y'all may not know what that is but I, I i think it's like a i don't know like mumble means like voodoo priest i'm like i'm not the voodoo priest what are you talking about <laughs> i just uh, I just un I just understand how these things work, how matter works, right? And I give praise to Yeshua, Yahweh, Jesus Christ. So I kind of veered off, but that the Spirit led me to that. So I wanted to share that with you because in this time, you may be in your moment of isolation, you may be seeking salvation. And sometimes the tools that God places around to help you in the process of salvation, we make them our gods. And God has told me to share to the people, don't make the tool a God, praise God for the tool. Right? Don't make the moon or the sun your God, praise God for the sun. So I posted a video with Josh's son about the um, Akashic records and the sun. And a lot of people say, man, that's why I like, I like praise the sun or do whatever. I'm like, man, look into the sun, man. Let's sunbathe real quick. Let's honor God that the sun rose. Right? But let's never look into the sun and ask for the sun to be our salvation. Like, let the season communicate to you how to do the emotional work, right? Right. The moon is for the emotions, right? The sun, the, the God allowed the sun to direct the days and the moon to direct the nights. The dark nights of the soul referring to the pains that you grow through. The sun meaning 
like the records right right the, every time that the sun rises again we rise up with the sun right that 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 light is a significance of christ consciousness that's why god said right the light right you, you must be like a light you must be like a lamp right so that the light represents god power but a lot of people, they, 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 they take the representation and manifestations of God in reality and they make it a God. So we got to, in the moment that we're in isolation, seeking for the revelations that lead into salvation, we must not worship the tools. We must not make food our gods, right? Because food will not get you to get into heaven. It'll create a heavenly state in you, that's for sure, Right? A meditation will not get you into heaven. It will create heaven within you. So by that heaven within you, I mean a state of oneness with God. But we must never worship the tool. We must let the tool actually be a way that we are aligning ourselves with Christ. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So we don't have to worship the sun, the sky, the clouds, the tree. I love hugging trees. I understand the metaphysical, the physical, the, the trees give oxygen. I've never worshipped the trees. I tried tree hugging before, and it felt so peaceful. It's like I could feel the heartbeat of the tree, right? And in fact, if you wake up between four and six and you hug the trees, the trees actually give up a certain ox oxygen that you can actually take in and help. it's healing for your body. But what has happened is we take the laws of men or we, we don't seek for understanding or understanding. We stand underneath limiting beliefs. And those limiting beliefs cause us to stay away from everything that's going to get it closer to God. Now, that's, that, that's my entire, this is my entire philosophy on the connection between holistic living and Christ consciousness. This is my entire way of, of seeing things. And there are just some things that I don't get into because I also recognize that that spiritual tool is not one of Christ, right? I also recognize that, well, I don't need to use a spell. I use the word of God because you spell words, but I don't need to use a spell to get results. I use the word of God because in the word of God is already results. So I don't, I'm not going to put some herbs together and make a spell so somebody can love me. I'm going to get in the word and recognize the love inside of me and radiate that love so I attract the love. I don't need spells. I need the word. So there are some things that there are spiritual tools you shouldn't use because any spiritual tool that bypasses creator is actually that satanic. If you want to bypass God so that way you're not working with God or working for God, you're making yourself the God or you're making the thing the God, that's when you are, you are spitting on the face of God. And a lot of people do that. And to each his own. To each his own process. To each his own level of enlightenment. To each his own way of being. Judge lest ye be judged. But as for me and my temple, as for me and my family, as for me is what I stand with, I don't need to look outside of me to, to, to get what God put in me. As for my, as for my, I don't need a card to tell me what I, God told me in the word. I don't need a person to tell me what God told me in the dark. I, I don't need somebody to look into the crystal ball to say is my future. When God says, here are the plans, I have plans to prosper you and to elevate you. I don't need that. So there are some tools that I don't need to use because I recognize the tools I already have. So I've differentiated the tools that's, that we can utilize. You get what I'm saying? So let the spirit take me where it took me. I, somebody needed that word. If somebody needed that word comment, I needed that word real quick. <laughs> somebody probably needed that. So in your season of isolation, in your seeking, you're gonna get a lot of people that say that this is the way. Oh, man, this is the way to do it. And because you, you didn't know, ignorance is the ultimate way to ignorance. Because ignorance gets you into ignorance where you make somebody else's knowledge your God. Where God says, I am the beholder of all wisdom and knowledge. 
So I take people's words with a grain of salt and I take the science behind it because what a lot of people do is tell you the science, but science is just man explaining what God did in the beginning, not even correctly all the time. Science is just a way of putting underneath an umbrella what God didn't have to put in an umbrella because God is the umbrella. So science is putting into words what God put in nature. You don't need science to tell you stuff that the word can. So somebody says, where did you read this from? I got it straight from God. Somebody says, well, did the sunshine, did the sun give you, did the Akashic records bless you with the wisdom to do it? Well, maybe God sent it to the sun, but I know the sun is also in me because I'm a son of God. We are all sons of God. Son does not necessarily mean gender. Son means position. And I was positioned in alignment with God, the light, to be a son of God. So therefore, I, I am a son, right? I am a servant. So just like the son is a server, I am a servant of the son. And I'm not talking about the, plant, the, the son as far as the energy source. I'm really referring back to the energy source. So therefore, I spread on the basis of what I acquire from the ether that, that, that we can say transmutes into my spirit through the Holy Spirit because I'm not alone. I'm all one. When I was isolated, God spoke to me and through my meditations, through the way I changed my life, God was blessing me with knowledge and wisdom that I didn't have to read, but that was blessed inside of me. So now when I share, I don't share from a place of what I learn, I, I, I speak from a place of what I'm learning and what God is blessed with me with. And in that place, I can resonate with people because then I mix the explanations of what we found out or how we described what God already said to explain to you. It's because that also works together. So somebody said, I'm just going to let the spirit guide me and never read a book, never learn. Okay, yeah, that's not going to work. The Spirit's going to guide you to the right book. And then God's going to allow you to make the connections. So knowledge is a tool that we acquire to connect the way we express how we see what God did and to express what God is doing and to share what God has done and to express what God will continue to do. Foresight, insight, mind sight, soul sight, in insight or sight that we can't even say well i can't really see it with my two eyes how do you know this i just know it and that's okay that's enough and if you don't believe me you don't need to believe me i did not come right like john the baptist said this i am i didn't i did not come to save people i came to spread the word i just my my goal is here a conduit i'm just here to share the gospel Right? I'm here to share what God put inside of me, but I don't want people to follow me. My goal is to share what God put in me so you can follow Christ. So somebody says, what's my intention? Well, my intention is to reveal truth. And every day I'm asking God to allow me to relinquish my ego so I can be a conduit to release the truth. But I can't do that if I'm toxic. If my emotions are getting in the way, if my body is toxic. Right. So I got it. So I make myself holy by holy. I mean, in one with God, by fasting and fe juice feasting, by eating healthy, by moving and breathing, by meditation, by indulging in my words. I just came to shed light on the truth because we are lights and our lamp. We're, we're going to shine. We are in the. They call it the age of. Aquarius is also the age of evangelism. This is an age where, where the gospel is going to be spread in all places that it wasn't yet spread. It's going to be spread to people, but not everybody's going to hear. But that's why God said those who have ears will let them hear. But there will also be some sling in the process. That's why God asks you not to operate in the spirit of fear because you can't be, you can't be scared of losing your flesh because even when you lose your flesh, you're going to gain connection to the spirit and it is worse for a man 
to give up his soul than to give up his body. So somebody says, how do I do the work if I'm scared? Well, you have to love God more than you love your body. You have to love the body of Christ more than you love your body. Now, that's very difficult to relinquish your ego like that because you're like, man, I'm afraid of death. If you're afraid of death, you're going to be afraid of life. The people who live are the people who speak life and truth because they're not afraid of death because they know they will never die. If you know you will never die, you will never be afraid of death. If you're not afraid of death, you're going to be in your light place. And if you're a light, you're going to be given life and life will shine through you. So you won't be scared to testify. You won't be scared to spread the truth. You won't be scared to be stoned by other people's comments or words or discredibility. Oh, this guy don't know what he's saying. OK, I don't. God do. God did. Right. You won't be scared of any of that. Once you relinquish your need to control your future and to recognize that it was written, it is done. It is done. Your, your, your expansion, it is done. It is so and, and it is done. How can, I, how can anything stand against me when God is for me? How can I be lonely when I'm all one with the one? How can I be by myself when, when I'm only this? Who said that? Shout out to Jason. I learned a lot from him. When he said, when I'm the spear of the arrow, right? That's a beautiful way of putting it. I, I, I stand. I stand with more force. I, look, my gun is not my gun. Somebody says, man, you look like a, a soldier. I am a spiritual soldier, but I, I don't tote that iron. I don't tote that gun. I don't tote that I speak, I fight battles with the word, with the word of God. I help, I help, I cast demons out with my words. I help people, I, I help people heal with my words. I heal myself with my words. So I am a conduit and representation of, the, of, of God, of Yeshua, right? So I use my words as power. So that's why I speak power into my life. That's why I speak power into your life. That's why I recognize that what I do is a noble thing to do, right? Just because you do a noble thing doesn't mean you'll be praised, but you don't need to be praised because all praise goes to who? God, right? So we don't need to be praised. You don't need to be liked. You don't need to be loved. We don't do it to like, to be loved. We praise because we love God. We praise God and we follow God. People will follow you not because they follow you, but they follow the truth in you. So everybody that's tapped into what I have going on is not here for the holistic motivator or Ed. They're actually here for the gift that I have to deliver. So you have a gift to deliver, and if you're operating in the spirit of fear, you can't deliver it because you think it's about you. You're scared, of, you're scared for you. But God has said, look, how about my people? God is saying, let my people go. And he's like, here's the rod and the staff of your word. Your rod and your staff will protect me. The word will protect you. The word, the rod and the staff is your tongue. What will split, what will split the oceans that come in your way of freedom is not necessarily something physical, it's something spiritual. What will break the chains of your trauma is not something physical, it's something spiritual. It is prayers, prayer warriors. It, it is spirit-led people. It is, it, it is with our mouth that we break these chains. It is how we align ourselves with Christ that we break. This is how we put in our body what we bless our souls to break these chains. That's the power. That's your gun. That's what you go into battle with. So when people come at you with weapons that you think is going to hurt you, you need to speak. But then you are speaking that by, by looking at yourself with a mask and thinking you're weak, but you're strong. And the more you think that you're weak, you keep paying the debt. So let's speak life into our lives in this season. Let's get in touch with God in our season of isolation. Let's fast in this season. Don't toxify your temple when you need a clear temple. Don't go eat a bunch of mac and cheese and dairy and meat. Bring some healthy food to the potluck. Bring some, some healthy food change up how you eat in Christmas. Eat to satisfy, not to eat for fulfillment, not for fill. 
nourishment. Eat to be filled with the spirit where you get medicine in your food, not so that way you can feed your carnal nature so you could ignore your spirit. Don't get the hiatus. Take a hiatus from what's making you sick. That's my message, and I'm sticking to it. It's the holistic motivator. And shout out for everybody who tapped in on the live. If this was empowering for you, drop some fire in the chat. <laughs> Hold up, where the horn? If this was a word, drop some fire in the chat, baby. <laughs> I thank you, 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 Lord, for this message today. I pray, I pray for the covering of everybody who feel lonely in this season, who feel isolated in this season. Please come into their hearts and make them recognize that the isolation is only preparation for expansion. That they're not lonely, but they're all one with you. Please allow them to heal and grow and transform and be more led by the spirit, less by the body. Be more concerned about the tools of the kingdom rather than the pacifiers of the world. Please allow them to step into unconditional love and out of resentment, sadness, depression, and pain. Please be a blessing to everybody who is already a blessing and to those who are currently suffering. Get into their hearts, make it soft. Shield them with the, with the shield of righteousness, the breastplate of righteousness, the, 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 the breastplate of, of faith, right? Please allow them to, to walk with a strength and power that nobody can understand where to get that power from, but only you know, because you were the first, the last, and you are in us, and you are always with us. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. It is so, and it is done. It is so, and it is done. It is so, and it is done. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you all for watching.